How are we doing? New desk. Let's get this thing in position here. Sorry I've been gone for a while. I had a whole world of problems with my internet connection recently and uh, things got to a point where for about three weeks we were living in a house of four um, with an internet connection that comes from not even the 3G era with phones but like 2G. It was bad. It was terrible. In fact, I've, I'm, I'm going to start a petition to make it so that internet connections are a necessity, like water and electricity. I'm never doing that again. Thanks to the people at Virgin Media, this is not a sponsor by the way, who set me up with a one gig line, so I will never have this problem again, and it has been rock solid ever since. So, uh, should we get on with the video? Alright, so the video today is a request that came in a while ago and would you believe that just before I lost my internet connection about a month ago, I was asked to make this video and I recorded the whole thing. The mic was muted. So, so we're gonna try again. Let's talk about the Black Templars. More importantly, where did it all start? The origins of the Black Templars. Now, this goes back to the Horus Heresy, where during Horus's attack on the Imperial Palace, the Imperial Fist's Primarch, Rogel Dawn, who was in charge of the, the primary person in charge of the defences there, chose his first captain, Sigismund, as the Emperor's champion, and he was given the very best armour and weapons that could be found. Now, Sigismund went forward to challenge all of the traitorous leaders in single combat, and he triumphed over every single one. Now, after the Horus Heresy, Robute Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, ordered the breakdown of the Space Marine Legions into what we now know as chapters. Now, Dawn thought that Gilliman was a bit of a coward for not being there during the defense of terror. Now, that could be another video in itself, but let's stick to the facts here about the Black Templars. Now, Gilliman, in turn, thought that Dawn was a rebel for refusing to accept the dictates of the new Codex Astartes. Now, neither would give in. Lehman Russ from the Space Wolves, Primarch of the Space Wolves, and Vulcan, Primarch of the Salamanders, both sided with Dawn on this, as they didn't want their legions divided either while Korax of the Raven Guard and Jagatai Khan of the White Scars sided with Gilliman. It looked like we were about to have the Horus Heresy 2.0, but it didn't happen. The Imperial Fists were persecuted for their so-called heresies, and even fired upon, would you believe, by the Imperial Navy. Now, when this civil war seemed to be on the cusp of actually occurring, Dawn relented and he agreed to split his legion. Now the first successor chapters that were created from the Imperial Fists, the Crimson Fists and the Black Templars. And it's the second one that we're gonna focus on. Now the Emperor's champion, Sigismund, led the more zealous of the Imperial Fists with him to the founding of the Black Templars and became their first High Marshal. Sigismund swore an oath that when he left Terra, that he and his new chapter would prove their loyalty by never resting in his duties against the enemies of the Emperor. Now Sigismund spent much of his time remaining vigilant over the Cadian Gate, insisting that Horus's traitors would one day return to attack the Imperium. Now despite the dismissals of many, many Imperial officials, Sigismund was right, and when Abaddon returned, it was in the First Black Crusade and the Black Templar fleet was waiting, and a massive battle came about that saw Sigismund killed by Abaddon himself. Now, since his death, every High Marshal since Sigismund has renewed the oath of never-ending crusade, and as such, the Black Templars has continued for over 10,000 years or as the longest Space Marine Crusade ever begun. Because of this unending crusade, the Black Templars have no permanent homeworld, and instead they live on their crusade fleets and barges using the planets that they conquer to establish chapter keeps, which are used for recruitment and staging areas. Now we've discussed a little bit about the ranks. Let's start with explaining what the High Marshal is. Now the chapter is led by the High Marshal, and he is the equivalent to other chapters' chapter masters. Now a Marshal leads an individual crusade. They come underneath the High Marshal. Under that is a Castellan, and they are the second in command to the Marshal of any crusade and in command of a fighting company of the respecting crusade. An Emperor's Champion is selected on the eve of a battle 
just as Sigismund, who was the first Emperor's Champion, let's not forget, was selected by Dawn. The Champion is an initiate who will have experienced a vision of the Emperor. When he reports this to the Chaplains, they will anoint him and gift him with the best weapons and armor that is available at the time. Usually, this is known as the Black Sword and the Armor of Faith. After this, we have Sword Brethren, who Unlike other chapters, the Black Templars don't actually have veteran sergeants in their squads. These are marines who excel in combat and are honoured by being promoted to the Marshal's Sword Brethren. Now they are also the only ones who are allowed to use Terminator armour. Now they fulfil a role comparable to the first company of the other chapters. Initiates are the rank and file marines of a fighting company. After proving themselves in battle, an initiate might be asked to take a single neophyte under his wing and train and teach him by example. Effectively, you're talking about Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker. And then we have Neophytes. Now these are the new recruits of the Black Templars. Unlike other Codex chapters, new recruits are not organized into a single company. Instead, each Neophyte joins a fighting company as the apprentice of a senior initiate. While the Black Templars don't have a dedicated scout company, Neophytes very often fulfill this role beginning their service with usually lighter armor and weapons than the initiates themselves. A neophyte will learn quickly from his tutor or die if he cannot. When the initiate and the chaplains deem that the neophyte has proven himself satisfactory in both courage and skill, he's elevated to the rank of initiate and will take his place in the fighting company. Now, if the initiate that's in charge of the neophyte dies before the neophyte's training is complete, his training and instruction will be taken over by another initiate. And if that initiate finds the neophyte worthy of his tutelage, he'll accept him. Neophytes that fail in their duty become the Cenobite servitors and eternally follow the chaplains of the chapter to defend them and play devotional chants and, well, kind of play out the chaplain's inspirational sermons. Inspirational? From the speakers in their respirator collars. The Black Templars are among one of the rarer chapters that worship the Emperor as an actual god, and they do follow the Imperial Creed. By their doctrine, the Black Templars absolutely abhor the traitor, the alien, and the mutant. The last category includes psychers, with the result that the Black Templars are one of the very few Space Marine chapters that actually willfully exclude librarians seeing them as a potential source of corruption in the midst of battle. However, Black Templars do use psychers in other non-combatant roles, such as astropaths and navigators. Black Templars view these beings with special reverence as they see them as able to commune directly with the God Emperor of Mankind. Black Templars place a great emphasis on close combat prowess and honor, and as such, they can often be seen charging into suicidal situations, primarily to avenge fallen comrades. Black Templars also set themselves apart from standard codex doctrine by including neophytes into squads of fully initiated marines to help teach them the ways of battle and combat. The Black Templars were also the first chapter to find the design for the Land Raider Crusader and were the first chapter to actually make use of it as well. The Crusader replaces the LAS cannons mounted on a standard Land Raider with hurricane pattern bolters, placing a huge emphasis on anti-infantry firepower and freeing up more space within to carry larger squads. The Black Templars are also notorious for defying the Codex Astartes doctrine that states that a chapter can only number a thousand battle brothers. This is partly due to the divided nature of the chapter being spread out everywhere on separate crusades, usually consisting of several hundred battle brothers per crusade, and no one has thus been able to keep track of their exact numbers. However, it has been estimated that there may be several thousand Black Templar companies out there, spread all around the galaxy. An almost unstoppable force if they ever manage to gather at one place. They're also a cause for the Inquisition to keep a really close eye on the Black Templars. So there we have it, the Black Templars, in a nutshell, toned down into a small video, nice bite-sized chunk. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below, tell me what you think, tell me if I've missed anything because it's always good to add more knowledge to these videos and I'll pin your comment, I'll stick it up to the top, I'll give it a like. But uh, if you have a video that you would like me to do for you, you have a subject that you'd like me to cover, drop it in the comments below, I'll get to you, I promise. I do have a waiting list but we're working through it. I hope you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you next week for the next one but until then, happy gaming.